Oh, folks. It has arrived. Let's see what all we got. Go on, Toby. Toby, go on. Let's see what we got here. Get back. Go on. Let's see what we have here. Oh, my gosh. Gotta get both hands on it. Come on. Is this what I think it is? Come on, get back. Let's see. Is it what I think it is? Oh, buddy. We got a DLP chip installation kit. Oh, yeah, just don't even fucking try and focus. Paperwork. Okay. And what do we have here? Oh, man. Hopefully, that is exactly what we needed. But we will find out shortly. We'll start tearing the TV apart. All right, so here is one last shot of what's been happening to this television. You can see uh, many of the mirrors have stuck in the on position. And if you look real close, the on position are these white dots. Okay. And stuck in the off position are the black dots. Can you see that? They are just everywhere. This TV, for all intents and purposes, here, see if we can see them in the O and the N. Yeah, you can see it a little bit. You can see the black dots everywhere though too. So this TV is pretty shot, okay? You'd think, because this is, you know, it's a 67 inch, it's a big TV. You're gonna spend some money to replace everything that is There we go, there's another shot where you can really see it with it lit up. All those black dots now. Um, pretty fried. But for less than $200, I bought the DMD chip that will replace that. It, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time, and hopefully I can shoot a good enough video on it. There, see if that doesn't help. Alright, that's that's my hand on it. If that makes any sense. So you can see just how big it is. Okay. So I'm gonna get this thing powered down and flipped around and let's get started. Alright, so here we are. We're gonna start at the beginning. I know it's a freaking mess. I'll do my best to uh clean all this up before I put it back together. But we are going to start by removing these two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten screws to get this main panel off. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Oh, yeah, one last thing, you guys. Um, you'll need a Phillips screwdriver, um, a spade screwdriver, or some people call it a flathead. And uh, best case scenario, you should have a grounding strap and some microfiber cloth. And I actually think that's about it. Maybe some air duster to clean uh, a mess just like that up. But uh, it doesn't really take a whole lot. Right. Oh, I almost forgot. You will need to get that screw out, which is 11, and I really think that's it. So, yeah, I'm not going to ignore any of it. Yeah, look at that muss. Jeez. Air duster is definitely a must, or com compressed air. You got a compressor and an air gun. Okay, once the... 11, is that what it was? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Once the 11 screws are out, this should just, and here I'm going to do it for the first time, let's see. Yeah, this should just come away freely. Look, I'm just, I'm touching it very lightly and 
it just comes right away. If you have any, any restriction at all, if there's any fight, wow, look how dirty that thing is. Jeez. I'm surprised it doesn't have other problems. But uh, if there's any fight at all, if there's any resistance, you're missing something. So look back, make sure you got them all. All right, so it looks like they've designed this quite well. For this particular unit, we need to remove this bit of chassis across here, okay? Which involves this ribbon cable, that socket, let's see if I can get a good angle on it. There. This, uh, that socket right there. And, uh, come around this side and uh, this socket right here if you look carefully and follow that wire path see if I can get a good shot of it it's running right down well of course I can't it's running right down underneath this fan this this bundle right here that bundle right there is running right underneath the fan into this chassis housing right here this this guy that guy which is part of this so that socket needs to be unplugged jeez it looks like that's about it i need to pop those guys out of that retainer clip because they don't I mean they're going elsewhere they're not attaching to this hardware so I'm gonna pop those out and where are you guys going you're going back down and around so I don't have to worry about you just yet so I think that's it I think just that socket that ribbon cable and that socket and it looks like it's just that screw and that screw. So I'm going to, oh no, I don't know what's up with this. I really don't know what's up with that or why it's even there. So perhaps I need to pull that unit back and out of the way. Maybe I can just move it out of the way. I don't know what the hell that really is for though. It's just protection from the fan who knows we'll find out I like diving into stuff hopefully I don't break it but even if I do you guys saw what the screen looked like so it's already it's already dead so I'll be back in a minute all right now uh, that top ribbon cable it comes right out but it has two pinch points I don't know if you can see those right there they're real small, but you can see the release points right on the tabs. It comes right out as soon as you pinch these little points. Now, anybody that's done stuff like this before can figure it out, but I'm just showing you so you don't just go ripping it. Because if you rip this ribbon cable, then you're really screwed. Alright. I imagine something similar is happening with that socket right there. Let's take a look. Uh, maybe, oh uh, yeah, look, it looks as though you pinch it width-wise instead of length-wise like the ribbon cable, so let's see if that's the case. Give it a little push with one finger, boom, right there. So the trigger points on the left-hand side, the locking mechanism, so boom, now that's, that's done. That's not so bad, alright, let's see. Still looks like there's just nothing else in there at all. That's good. I don't want, I don't like complicated, complicated crap. Still gotta undo that guy. So let's see, this looks like it's the same way. It looks like it's just a pinch. So let's see if it is. Give it a little pinch and pull. Oh fuck, that doesn't wanna let go at all, does it? Hmm. That's not a pry guy. 
right. No, he's grabbing right around, so. Tension and boom. Fuck, that doesn't want to come out. Give me a minute, I'll figure that out. Okay, so just exactly what I thought. In order to undo this connector, it should be a pinch connector. You should be able to just grab right here like this and pinch and pull. But it is a little over engineered, so I'm using this uh, slot tip screwdriver to actually get up underneath that connector. You see that? Super easy. It, it wants to be there. As soon as you push that, it get, pops over that lip and it should just come loose. Just like that. Alright. Yeah, let's get a good close shot of that. Yeah, it wants to grab around, but for some reason there just isn't enough deflection when you pinch that. So get in there, you know, there isn't a whole lot of clearance here, that's why I only used the 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 tip. But it didn't take much. Ha 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 ha. Funny guy. I would imagine you wanna just kinda tuck that up and up and out of the way for the moment so that when you slide it out past this cage everything just comes out clean okay now while I'm here uh, a different kind of scenario there it's a little v-belt clip v-belt belt nice freaking idiot and I'm gonna lightly ever so gently wrap it right around that capacitor and I'm gonna remember that I did that and that's again just to get it up and out of the way. I don't need to pull the rest of this out. I don't need to screw with it. It actually looks, you know, fairly clear all the way through here. I'm trying to do the minimum work I can to get this unit out to just replace the uh, the DMD processor or the DLP chip or whatever you want to call it. So, all right. So I think the next step. We've got both of those connectors undone. So I think the next step is just pulling this screw and that screw. And I think the entire unit should just slide out. If not, you'll see. I'll show you the binding points. But it looks like, I mean, it looks, it, it literally looks like, you know, nothing is going to bind us up right there. And it doesn't look like anything's going to bind us up there. And hopefully that foam, excuse me, is the only thing that's going to be even close to holding this up. But this all looks like it stays together, so, all right. All right, so, after removing those two screws, uh, my only concerns are uh, these wire retainers here. They're the one-way kind. You know, like uh, plastic pop rivets for uh, inner fender wells on a car. You know, they go in real nice and easy, but they don't want to come back out. So what I'm going to have to do is be very careful because this piece right here, and you can see that, that strip of foam, insulating foam, that's actually where the projector is projecting up onto the screen. And you don't want to damage that foam. In fact, you don't want to damage any of this right now. So I'm going to do my best to be very careful. It seems to be flexible, so I think it will come right out. But I really don't want to break those clips. Unless I have to. If I have to cut them out and just use some zip ties or whatever, then yeah, you know, I'll do what I have to do. But uh, I think it should just come out if I'm kind of gentle. So we'll give it a, a shot and see what happens here. Okay, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Okay, first part moved all right. All right, seems like we're okay so far. Let's see, now that's what I don't want to run into. Is that right there. I don't want to damage that foam, and it appears as though this part of the housing is very flexible, so 
As long as you're gentle with it, you should be able to extract this entire unit without damaging anything. But I could be wrong. We'll find out right here. Oh, look at that. That's not too bad. Look at that. We're doing all right so far. Bam. Get that. Oh, oh, oh. Let's be nice. I don't want to pull on wires. All right. All right. And you can see how gentle I'm being. So if uh, my dumb ass can get this out of here successfully without damaging anything, you should, you should be able to. Okay, so this guy is hanging us up a little. And I'm doing it one-handed because my cameraman didn't show up. Fucking asshole. I'm getting hung up again. Which would not be occurring if there's someone else here. Oh, okay. So we've got a tight area right here with this guy. Give him a little turn. Give it a little pull. Oh my gosh, it's gonna just come out. And there's our lens. Alright, so we're almost done. In fact, I'm gonna just have to put this down now because <clears throat> I feel like there's uh, nothing holding me back from this. Alright. If there is, I'll let you guys know. But I think this is just about to just drop on the floor. So, So there it is. It came right out. There was uh, literally nothing else holding it in. This is super easy to fix, man. Uh, if you guys have the chance, you know, you may want to take the front panel off and actually clean the screen. And if there's cobwebs in there or whatever, uh, you may want to clean them also. But this unit is literally the entire TV, short of the inputs and outputs, board, and uh, uh, the power conversion board. I mean, this is it. That's the entire TV. I'm sure it could have been like an 80 inch, you know, but uh, maybe the, the DMD chip I'm replacing, maybe it starts to get too funny looking after the fact. But either way, that's it. We're gonna clean this guy up and then we'll move on to the next step. Yep, looking good. It's super easy. That was, I mean, I could have walked my freaking nephew through that. So, will you stop? We're gonna tr continue being a little wily, so all right, stop it. Be nice. All right, so here we are. I've carefully blown this out, blew this fan out, blew through this fan, through this heat sink this big heat sink right here uh, clean that fan out the best I can I might go back with some isopropyl rubbing alcohol and wipe some of this down but I got the majority of the dust out you know and there's a handful of things you guys you don't really want to touch I would imagine if you can help it you know the lens being one of them just don't right the less you have to clean later, and you're going to want to clean that a little bit anyway, but the less you have to clean later, the better. So having said that, make sure your ground strap is on. <clears throat> you know, and next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this fan, which is just retained a couple grommets, Phillips screws, and then I'm going to take that heat sink off right there, which involves these... There's four of them. There's four preloaded screws. So, give me a minute. All right. So I think rather than removing these screws, the next step is to actually remove this retaining spring from this top heat sink piece. All right. It seems to be completely independent of everything else, and it appears as though you just need to press in and I can't do it one-handed but it appears as though you just need to press in and pry with a screwdriver and it should release the tension and you know then that other side and this should just come right off so we'll see if that in fact is the case here in just a minute 
And it was. As soon as I pushed that in and gave it just a little bit of a pry, that should come right off the other hook. Come on, one-handed action. And you notice I gave it a little twist first because I wanted to make sure that the fuck that the uh, insulating pad or I don't think it's thermal paste on the back side of this uh, make sure it stays intact didn't leave anything on the back of uh, the DLP chip or the DMD processor whatever you however you want to call it uh, so now the next step is to remove those four screws, you know, undo these other two, I believe they're fans, they are, these two fans, just, they're simple pinch and pull, real simple, and then this, this cage can come off, and then we'll tackle these four to pull the rest of the heat sink off. All right, now I've removed the four spring-loaded screws and it appears as though I also need to remove these four screws and then this piece should come off and before you take this before you take those four preloaded pre come on before you take out the four preloaded screws the spring-loaded screws uh, it's probably a good idea to do one last light blowing off of uh, dust. You know, take an air gun in here, take a rag maybe with some rubbing alcohol, and just, you know, light touches here and there. Get the last little bits because after you take this cover off, the cleaning has to be done. You have to just be ready to put the new uh, DLP chip in and button it all back up. Even one little speck of dust on that chip will cause a huge headache and you'll have to take all this back apart and do it again. All right, so it appears I have to pull this entire board out. So I disconnected that connector, which went in here and this connector which went right in there and this guy that went right there and I think you just give it a little bit of force obviously I don't want to crack this thing it doesn't feel like anything is really holding it in there other than this guy and that guy yeah put my hands right in the way this guy and that guy so we will see hopefully I don't break it yeah all right so it was it was as simple as I started over on this corner over here and started just wiggling and wiggling and then it all came out all at once so here we are there's the source of all our problems and this one doesn't have any retainer clips like I've seen in other videos it just simply all right so as you can see uh, there are no retaining clips on this particular model it's just you give it a little wiggle and it pulls right off all right now we got the new one and we are going to really here I'm gonna set you guys down for a second we're gonna check and make sure just make certain that this is the exact same component and uh, and well, if we give it a second all right, now it does appear to be the exact same component um, with some notable exceptions. You can see, I don't know if the camera will pick this up or not. Yeah, I don't think it will. Let's see if I turn it versus if I turn this one. I can actually see that the, all the mirrors are screwed up on this one. That shows it a little bit, but it doesn't really do it justice. So, we are going to very carefully, and I guess while I'm here, might as well check the, make sure that the part number matches. 
I mean, they do look identical though. I mean, it's the same. It is the exact same part. Awesome. So, this is, I guess, the most crucial point is setting this back in because people sometimes, I guess, don't get this seated down correctly all the way and it will make for a distorted picture. So, hopefully this is not where I screw things up. And while we're at it, you want to look, you want to hold this up, and it's not going to help you through the camera at all, but you want to get light reflecting off of that just right. You don't want even a single speck of dust on there because it will really throw things off. You know, while you're at it, you want to look down into uh, this light chamber or prism or, you know, reflector, whatever you'd like to call it. I'm sure there's a projector of some sort in here firing, but you want to make sure all of that is dust free as well before you go any further. All right, from here on out, it's just a reversal of the process, you know, plugging those guys back in, plugging your fans back in, uh, getting the screws, you know, you saw how everything went. So we'll get it back together and see uh, See if I completely boned this and it's garbage, or if uh, I got a good TV for a couple more years to go. All right, so as you guys can see, uh, obviously it worked. I'm waiting for this to load up so we can get a full picture, but uh, it appears as though I mounted the, the DLP chip flat. I don't have a raked picture to it at all. Uh, not even one stuck mirror in it, so I think I really lucked out on that also. Um, you know, and I hadn't really hit on this yet, but the whole point of this was to illustrate if I would have broken an uh, LCD TV or plasma or LED TV that was this big, or if the cells had started to burst, like how this does with the stuck mirrors. There's no fixing that. You have to throw it away. And you're throwing away a whole lot of stuff. And I'm not some huge environmentalist, but I like the idea of throwing something that's this big away versus something that's going to pollute being that big with everything that's in it. So uh, hopefully this has been instructional or maybe inspirational if you guys can even find these TVs anymore. Who knows if you can. Uh, but it was well worth the $185 I spent on that chip. So if this thing would fire up finally, we'd see if it actually had a decent picture. Go on, dude. <coughs> really? <coughs> oh, I just can't look. Just All right. So it looks as though, I mean, you might want to, I don't know if you need to drop down so you're on that height level or not, but I mean, that's as clean as it's going to get, I think, for what this TV is capable of. So I feel like I, I did something right. All right. All right. Now, for all of you that may be wondering about the quality of the television that I've just repaired, I'll give you that as a screenshot initially. And I will fire up a random movie and hopefully... I don't get copyright infringement because I'm doing this for instructional purposes. But we should be able to go in and let's see. I know it's not focusing correctly, so hopefully we get what we want out of this. In fact, I'll skip forward. A famous man once said, "We." Oh, it just will well, not focus. What are we waiting for? The sandwich was fair, the spring was a little rusty, the rest of the materials all made do. By the way, when you said your sister had a watch, I yeah. was kind of hoping for something a little more adult than that. <laughs> She's sick. Anyway, it's limited edition. When can we talk about New York? Maybe never. Relax about it. What about the Avengers? Can uh, we talk about that? Let's skip ahead. Let me 
find a really you, good brothers and sisters. Trust me, you're gonna be in a puddle of blood on the ground in five. Ten thousand feet. Now, hopefully it caught that for a second. I know I'm not using the best camera, but the quality is there. This isn't something to be thrown away. It's something to be fixed. I think uh, this illustrates that quite well. And hopefully you guys have learned something from all this. I know I have. So I wish you luck. It is easy. Peace out.